Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 26, 2020, recorded around 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look at the tropical Atlantic this afternoon and evening as the sun rises to the sunset across the tropical Atlantic, we do have a couple of tropical waves, and we can back this up here to roughly about 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We do have a tropical wave emerging off of Africa right now, the coast here of Africa, and this will be traversing westward over the next several days or so, but not really a threat to develop. And then we also have an area of energy down here in the Gulf of Mexico, not really uh, expected to develop at all. And we do have this kind of upper level feature down here. This is not expected to develop either. So right now, Everything is quite in the tropical Atlantic, and we can see that here from the 8 p.m. tropical weather outlook that it is all quiet. There is nothing to worry about over the next five days, and it is going to be a picture perfect next five days. Uh, if you you know have anything planned, obviously down in, in the tropical regions or whatever, the islands, no problem there. And uh, this is all kind of set up in, in response because we have a suppressed phase. Of the Kelvin wave. Uh, a Kelvin wave is basically a short-term pulse of energy in the atmosphere, either a suppressive pulse or an enhancive pulse, uh, which typically, the, again, the suppressive phase, as one might think, it suppresses hurricane development. In the active phase, which is in the blue here, this enhances hurricane development. So what you're seeing right now is a suppressive phase of the Kelvin wave pass over Africa and the tropical Atlantic basin. This is propagating eastward with time. So this will move in and across Africa, then over the Indian Ocean, then back over the West Pacific. And then this enhanced phase will much do the same. It will pass over the Atlantic basin, over Africa, over the Indian Ocean, and into the West Pacific. And these are kind of short-term pulses of energy that occur. So right now, the quiet period is all in response because of an interseasonal change in the atmosphere from an enhanced phase of the Mount Julian Oscillation and the, and the Kelvin wave to a suppressive phase of both. Thus, we're not really seeing hurricane development right now. But if we look here at the velocity potential, this is 200 millibars in the atmosphere. And what we really are looking for is these blues and purples. This is the enhanced phase of the Madden Julian oscillation, which works basically in the same way as a Kelvin wave, except these are much larger. These are a much larger phenomenon and they are slower movers because they are faster or they are much more expansive in the atmosphere. These uh, move slowly, these interseasonal changes and, and variabilities. Uh, but right now, all your enhanced phase right now is over the West Pacific and then stretching over partially into the Central Pacific and Eastern Pacific. Now, this will be kind of occurring throughout time, and this will be uh, kind of setting up the change uh, between the uh, active West Pacific and then the kind of quiet Atlantic right now. We can see that we have a suppressed phase right over the Atlantic Basin currently. This is allowing for no development across the basin. If we go back down here to the week two extrapolated forecast, this is all coming from Michael Ventress, Dr. Michael Ventress, by the way, in his website. Uh, but you can see that what starts to happen is this uh, suppressed phase of the Kelvin wave goes over Africa. It weakens uh, uh, quite a bit, actually, and it shrinks and condenses in size. But you also have an enhanced phase of the Kelvin wave or the enhanced phase of the Mount Julian Oscillation that passes into the Central and East Pacific. Now, initially, this will favor more Eastern Pacific development. So you'll probably see an uptick once again in Eastern Pacific tropical cyclone activity. And then after that point, this is going out all the way to October 10th, we will likely see activity roll back into the Atlantic Basin for yet another round of tropical cyclone activity. And again, you know, the month of October is particularly active, especially for landfalls in the Gulf Coast of the United States, particularly Florida. Uh, that is your biggest time uh, and biggest year and biggest year of concern or time of the year concern 
four major hurricane landfalls, only beating September by a smidgen, but still, this does have consequences going forward, and this will likely result in what could be an increase in tropical cyclone activity. And I want to point out here, you don't necessarily need an enhanced phase of the Mount Julian Oscillation to get tropical cyclone activity. It's harder to do without the help of the, the Mount Julian Oscillation, but it's not impossible, and we saw that with uh, storms like Isaias, Gonzalo, etc. from earlier in the year, <clears throat> excuse me, that formed out across the deep tropics with a suppressed interseasonal phase. That is what we're seeing right now, so it's not entirely impossible to see development. So you do have to keep kind of keeping your eyes on things, and things do look to be changing here within a little bit of time. Now we can see how that's kind of illustrated here in the GFS forecast. This is uh, out here in the um, 18 uh, Zulu time uh, forecast here. And again, what you're going to be looking for is uh, a area of low pressure to come down across the continental United States, a trough of low pressure to dig down across the continental United States. And you can see one right here uh, that's kind of caving some weather there. But we'll look forth with time, and this is the big kind of sweeping system. You can see that the height lines here highlighted in the contours these dig down all the way into the Gulf of Mexico and over the northeast and over Florida. That's the jet stream pattern up there. Um, but you can clearly see that this is a big problem. And again, this is one of those things that you just have to kind of keep an eye on with time. And again, th what you're kind of seeing right here is a trough in this cold front that's kind of stretching down through here. Now, you notice what, what ends up happening is we get this cold front to move all the way across into Florida. This crosses Florida near Lake Okeechobee. It kind of stretches something like that. That's our, our front right there. We have this big kind of cutoff flow back here uh, that's, that's developing, etc. Well, what this is going to do is this stalls a front in a, a weak front, but it stalls a front uh, from right around Lake Okeechobee, according to the to the GFS, uh, you know, across southern Florida into the southwestern Atlantic and the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see that sliver of energy does stretch down all the way into the Bay of Campeche region in Central America. Now, after that time, we're going to get these tropical waves that end up trying to kind of pile up the moisture uh, down across here, across uh, Central America. This is uh, you know, hour 198, so we're getting out there to kind of the, the law law land of the GFS. But this is through October 5th, and I just kind of want to point out that, you know, it does try to develop an area of low pressure down here, you know, and it is pretty consistent with, you know, the stalling front kind of weakening down here. An area of low pressure tries to form down here and, you know, what else? So this has my attention but isn't necessarily a credible threat right now. There is no credible threat to believe uh, that we're going to see a fairly significant uh, you know, storm develop down there. There's certainly nothing to worry about at this moment. We, we still have a long way to go until you know, we have to really keep our eyes on it. But if you're not careful, these things can sneak up on us. And the euro here, for what it's worth, again, the euro shows kind of much of the same thing it, you know it, it it does kind of stall a front down here and does develop a weak area of vorticity down here across the caribbean so this is going to be something to watch certainly the models today have you know especially the gfs parallel the, the newer version of the gfs you know the regular gfs you know if you go far and out in time you'll see what happens but the bottom line is it is getting to that time of the year where this area is now going to be the favorite hotspot for development. And we can't take our eyes off of this just because there's nothing explicitly showing within five days. But again, not something to worry about, not something to stress over. But just be aware that, you know, this is going into the time of the year where this is the hotspot for this time. And we just have to watch every little thing carefully. 
Remember, uh, you know, as a reminder, hurricane season goes until November 31st, so we have a long way yet to go in the hurricane season. It's best, be, it's best now to be prepared, rather be safe than sorry. But again, nothing to worry about at this time. Um, I did see something yesterday kind of regarding Trinidad. Nothing's coming towards you within the next five days of great concern, so I would not really be stressing over that at all. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your evening and early Sunday. Uh, of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow afternoon.